Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna go over how to set up the GTD method inside of Workflowy and how to actually use it. So for those of you that don't know, the GTD method or the getting things done method was created by productivity consultant, David Allen. He published a book on it where you can find more of the nitty gritty details uh, if you're interested in that. Um, but basically the idea is that you wanna get all of these ideas, thoughts, tasks out of your head, stop thinking about them, put them into a system where it becomes very easy to just kind of knock items one out after the other. In uh, as in this case, it's our next action section. So there are actually five steps to the system. Uh, capture, clarify, organize, reflect, and engage. Capture uh, just means capturing all of the, the ideas and items and actionables and projects into a system. So that would be our inbox. Next, we clarify, which means we're going to figure out exactly where those items go in within our structure that we have right here. And then organize and reflect kind of go together. That means breaking down the projects that we have into the different actions uh, that make up that project. So all the different steps. And finally, engage. It's where we actually start to knock things out that are in the next action section. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and open up the inbox section. As you can see, we've got a couple of different items here. Some of them are pretty, pretty mundane things like buying plastic containers, uh, taking my dog to the groomer. Uh, but we've got some other items here. We've got a link. We've got a project. We've got some other stuff. And uh, I'm just going to show you using a diagram how we figure out exactly where these items go. So I'm just going to scroll down here and open up this diagram. So th the question you're going to ask yourself for every single item in your inbox, once you've dumped out all your ideas, all your tasks, all your to-dos into the inbox, what you're going to do is sort these items. So we're going to ask ourselves, is this actionable? Can I, is this a thing? Is this an action? Is this something that I can do? So if it's not, what you're going to do is basically trash it, right? It's not worth keeping um, if you can't do anything about it. Now, you might also want to hang on to it and put it in a reference section. So, you know, million dollar ideas, um, links, uh, names of books, authors, blog posts, things that you want to read or reference later, those go into a reference section. Uh, if it's a project or an activity, but you're pretty sure you're not going to actually take the time to break it down or, or work on it today, there's no point in putting it in a, in a big list where you're not going to look at it and, and work on it. Instead, we're going to put it into a someday bullet. Next, if it is actionable, something that we can do, then we check, is it going to take me about longer than two minutes? If the answer is no, so it's going to take me less than two minutes, then just do it. Send that email, make that phone call, you know, start that project, whatever it is. If it takes you less than two minutes, just do it. It's not worth the effort to put it into the system. If it's going to take you longer than two minutes, then the final question you ask yourself is, is this one step? Is it a one step thing? If it's not, it's a project, even if it's two steps, basically. Within the GTD system, um, if it's more than one step, it's basically or yeah, it's basically a project. So just put in the project section. If it's only one step, then you need to decide, is it going to go into the next actions bullet? Is it going to go into my calendar or am I going to delegate it? If it's something that's date specific, like an appointment, it goes in the calendar. Otherwise, it goes into the next action section. If somebody else can do it, like you're on a team, you have an assistant, you have a partner, somebody that can help you or can handle this, that you can dele delegate it to, basically, you're going to delegate it. And then instead, what you're going to do is put it in a waiting for section where you can tag the item with the name of the person who you're delegating it to. So you can keep track of that and also the date that you delegate it. So now let's go ahead and sort those items in the inbox. First, we've got uh, buy plastic containers for frozen vegetables. Is that actionable? Yes. Is it going to take me longer than two minutes? Yes. Is it one step? Yes. So uh, since I don't have to do this by a specific date, I'm going to go ahead and put it into my next action section. Next, we have take peanut my dog to the groomer for a haircut. Is that an action? Yes. Is it going to take longer than two minutes? Yes. Is it one step? Yes. Again, I'm going to put this in uh, next actions. If I had an appointment with the groomer, then I would put that in my calendar. So I would just drop it in here and tag it with the date. Uh, next, Patrick Small, uh, 26 electric blue mountain bike. So what we've got here is a project. So let's say that this is the GTD for a person that has a uh, small bicycle business and they repair and paint bicycles. So this would be a project. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to drop it into the project section. First, I'm going to open it up so you can see we've got, we already have some different projects in here. Um, so we'll go ahead and drop it. This is a mountain bike. So I'll drop it in here. All right, and close that up for right now. Next, we have a link. This is not an actionable, so this is gonna go, I could either trash it, reference it, or put it in the someday section. This is a link that I want to look at later, so I'm gonna put it in my uh, references section. There we go. 
Update our business hours on the website. Is this actionable? Yes. Is it going to take me longer than two minutes? Um, no, but this is actually not for me. This is for somebody else. So I'm actually going to have to delegate this. Um, it is one step. So I'm, I'm just going to move it down here into waiting for. So when you delegate something, you move it into the waiting for section and then you tag it with the name of the person. So let's say I want to tag Sam here um, and I'm going to put today's date so I know when I delegated. And then if Sam had his inbox inside of a shared workflowy that we both use, I would just drop it into his inbox. Otherwise, I could either uh, send him a text message, or send him an email, and then put it in this waiting for section just so I know that I've let him know that, hey, Sam, we need, you need to update our business hours on the, uh, the website. And then start my own bicycle brand. So is this actionable? not exactly, right? This is more of a project um, and it's a project for the future. So I would need to break it down, figure out what exactly does this mean? What are the steps and all that good stuff? So what we'll do for those items that, you know, million dollar ideas, things you're thinking about, uh, but are not really actionable. They're not gonna do anything today about them. Uh, we can move them into the someday maybe section. So we can reference this later and pull items out that once we're ready to start thinking about and, and working on them. All right. So the next thing we want to do is when we're in our uh, next sec actions section, um, we can tag items by their context. That makes it easier. Right now, it's kind of simple. We've got two different items. So, you know, it's pretty easy to tell them apart. But let's say you've got 10, 20, 100 items, depending on how, you know, many items you like to keep in your next action section. Some people keep few items. Some people people keep a ton of items in here. As you add more, it, you want to be able to easily uh, sort them based on where you are. So let's say some of these activities you can only do when you're at home or some of them you can only do when you're at work or at, you know, out shopping or if you're a student at school or in the library. So that's what we mean. You want to tag them with the context so that then you can filter them. So for example, I would just go ahead and do something like uh, this is when I'm out shopping and this is when I'm out. I mean, this is when I'm at home actually because that's when I would, you know, take my dog and we would drive over to the groomer. So imagine I've got a bunch of different items here. I'm at home and I'm 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 going through my my next actions uh, that I can actually perform at home. What I would do instead of going through all the different uh, items here and sorting out the ones that I can do at home, I would just click on home, and then it would be filtered by the items that I can actually take care of right now. Right? I'm not going to handle something that I'm supposed to buy when I'm out shopping because I'm at home or vice versa. So that's the whole point of tagging these with the context. You can also tag them based on how difficult they are. So easy, you know, easy, hard, uh, medium, or you can tag them based on based on uh, your energy level. Like let's say in the mo you're a morning person and you like to handle the most complex things in the morning. Um, you can tag them like that, morning, evening, uh, noon, stuff like that. Basically, however you want to handle them. One of the most simple ways to do this is obviously based on, on places, right? Or uh, when you're at your computer or when you're in a taxi or when you're on vacation, things like that. Um, the next thing we would do after tagging these items, we would go down and figure out uh, any projects that we have, break them down. I've already broken this one down into the different steps because the whole point of the GTD system is that you want to break activities down into actionables, right? If it's something uh, that you can't do, you know, there's not, there's not, it's not easy to, to uh, progress with that. So you're going to break it down into the actionables for this project. In this case, we're going to sand the frame of the bicycle paint the frame neon yellow, and then grease and reassemble the bicycle. So for the projects, what you do is you want to pull at least one item from the project into the next actions section. You can pull more of them out depending on the type of project. So some of the items can be, you know, uh, you can do them in parallel or some of them need to be sequ done sequentially. So in this case, they have to be done sequentially. I'm only going to pull one item out. There's no point in me pulling these things out because I can't paint it until I sand it. So what I'll do is mirror this item so I'll hit the keyboard shortcut. If you don't know what that is, you can click on the uh, bullet menu next to the item, scroll down to see mirror, and you can either click that or type the, uh, hit the keyboard shortcut. So depending on what your operating system is, you're going to get a different keyboard shortcut. And then I would paste that into my next action section. And I would also, in this case, probably tag it, um, let's say, uh, Patrick Small, just so I know which one it is, because I could have maybe multiple uh, bikes that we're fixing up. So I just know that I just want to know that this is, this uh, particular bike is Patrick Small's bike. All right, so that's what we do for projects. 
So once we've sorted our inbox, you know, it's empty, we put all the items where they need to go, we've tagged them with the context, we've broken down our projects into the actionables, and we pulled out the first, at least one actionable from each project into our next action section. Basically, we can just focus on the next actions for today and, you know, take it from there, filtering by the, uh, depending on the context where we are, you know, if, if we've got them tagged home or work or shopping or whatever, and then we've got our to-do list, basically. So that's what we would do there. Now, once we're done, um, th there's also an important part of the GTD, which is the weekly review. So this whole process that we've done right here, ideally you would do it at least once a day. Uh, obviously it depends on how many items you're adding into your inbox. You can dump items you know, throughout the day into the inbox. You should be checking the inbox at least once a day and running through that process of sorting the items out and tagging them. So what you do, at once a week at least is a kind of a review so what you want to do during that time is you're going to go through the calendar make sure that the items that have been put into the calendar are tagged correctly um, you can check what the upcoming items are for this week and pull them you know if, if let's say it's you do this on sunday then uh, you see what items you've got for this week you can do a an advanced search inside of workflow so just search for this week or next week and it would show you all the items that have been tagged for next week, you probably just want to mirror those from your calendar into your next action section. Next, you would go into the projects to make sure that you've got at least one item from each project into your next actions uh, section. Um, you would go into the waiting for section and see if, you know, how long it's been since you've delegated an item. You want to maybe send that person a quick email or a message or something. Hey, what's up with this thing that I sent you? Has it gotten done or not? Also, you want to go into the someday maybe sections and, and basically review any projects or ideas and, and decide if now is the time when, you know, you want to take some, turn these into activities. You want to take those ideas and turn them into projects or turn them into actions. So you just kind of go through the list and make sure that any items that need to be turned into next actions have that done. Any items that you're just basically taking up space. You've decided, let's say that uh, you've got a project in the someday uh, maybe section that you're really just not going to do or you don't want to think about, you would trash that. Um, it's also time for, for cleaning up. So that's basically the whole process, and you would do this uh, every week. So that's the entire process. It's pretty simple. Um, like I said, if you want to use this exact template, you can do so by going into the uh, description of this video opening that link and clicking on copy to my workflow. As long as you're logged in, you'll be able to copy this exact template and you can take it from there. So I hope this video has been useful. Let us know in the comments below uh, if you use the GTD method inside of workflow or what method do you use to stay on top of things and get things done. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.